So, let us continue with our discussion on IP addressing and routing. If you recall in our last lecture we had talked about how packet fragmentation and reassembly happens in IP. Now, in this lecture in the part 2 of it here we shall be talking about some aspects of IP addressing and the concept of IP address classes. Let us see. Well, when you talk about IP addressing we need to understand what is the basic role of IP. IP is a protocol of the TCP IP family that works at the network layer level and IP ensures some kind of uniqueness of each node or computers that are connected to the internet. At the level of IP we assign some kind of address to every computer or host and that address is supposed to be unique because it is very clear if it is not unique if you are sending a packet to some other computer and if there are multiple computers with the same IP address there will be confusion. The routers will not know where to forward and therefore, this uniqueness in address is very important. Okay. So, each host connected to the internet it is very important has to be identified by unique IP address and the way IP address is defined it is a 32 bit quantity. So, you can clearly see you can have 2 to the power 32 so many different unique addresses which is about 4 billion you can have 4 billion such IP addresses that are unique right. Now, here I will take an example this 32 bit number or this address this is a little difficult to remember okay, 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 32 binary digits. So, to make it a little concise there is something called a dotted decimal notation where you divide the 32 bits into 4 bytes which are called octets and each of these 8 bit quantities you express in decimal and you write them as the decimal numbers w x y z separated by dots this is called the so called dotted decimal notation. Now, we shall see that this 32 bit network address that we are talking about there are two parts in this address. The first part identifies a network there are many networks in the world internet is essentially a network of networks. So, the first part will identify which network I am talking about and the second part identifies a host. This is somewhat similar to the way we specify the address of our house, we specify a country, we specify a city, we specify a street, then you specify a house number. Similarly, here we are specifying a network and within the network which computer a host which host. Okay. So, depending on the way this partitioning is carried out we can define these IP address classes this we shall see. Now, the dotted decimal notation let us take an example here. Suppose, here we have a 32 bit IP address you see there are 32 bits this we have divided up into 4 8 bit chunks octets and each of these 4 bit chunks you are expressing in equivalent decimal okay. and this 32 bit number we are expressing in a concise form like this 66.134.48.126. This is the so called dotted decimal notation which is much easier to write express and also remember. Okay. This is the basic idea. Now, this hierarchical addressing I have already talked about that the way we address a computer is in two parts address of the network and address of the host. So, here I am just repeating it again. So, every host or computer that is connected to the internet is identified by two things a two tuple 
first one I mentioned already the network number. Now, network number has to be unique all the networks in the world must be assigned a unique number each of them must be unique. So, this has to be done by some central authority. So, there has to be some central authority which manages this network numbers and whenever you require to set up a new network they will give you a unique number this is the idea. And the second part is the host number within that network. Okay. This of course, can be managed by the local authority. Suppose, in your organization you have a unique network number, but inside you have 1000 computers you can number them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up to 1000 that is up to your local administrator to manage that numbering. Okay. So, the host numbering can be done by the local network administrator. And now, when the routers forward or route the packets, they do not look at the host part, they will only look at the network number part. Because the first task of the router will be to send the packet to the correct network. So, only the network number is looked at and once the packet reaches the current the correct network the router of that network will receive that packet and inside the network it will forward it to the correct host. This is how routing of the packet occurs. Now, talking about the IP address classes there are 5 defined IP address classes where class A, B, C are used to assign addresses to individual computers they are called unicast addresses. Unicast means address of a single node. Class D is used for multicast I want to send a packet to multiple computers at the same time I can use class D address and class E is reserved that means, you can use it for some special purpose if you want. Now, which class a particular IP address belongs to? Suppose, I give you an IP address like this a 32 bit IP address just by looking at the first few bits you will be able to identify which class the address belongs to. Okay. We will see how and we shall also see later there are some special purpose IP addresses which serve some or which has some special meaning okay. and this kind of IP addressing where we define the classes is sometimes also referred to as the classful model of addressing. Okay. Fine. Let us look at the class A address first. In class A address the way we the way we identify that this is a class A address is that it must start with 0. Any address that starts with 0 is identified as a class A address. The next 7 bits identify the network the last 24 bits identify the host within a network because there are 7 network bits that can 2 to the power 7 combinations well out of them there is one special all 0 is not used all zero, taking away the all 0 combination there can be 127 possibilities there can be 127 class A networks and inside each such network there are 24 bits in the host part 2 to the power 24 combinations are possible out of that two of the combinations are used for some special purpose we will see later the all 0 and all 1 combinations. So, if you take away these two this becomes 2 to the 24 minus 2 which is of the order of 16 million. So, this is used for very large networks up to 16 million computers in a single network right. And if you look at the address range the first bit is 0 and you can have all 0. So, 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 and 0 followed by all 1 
it comes to 127.255.255. This is in dotted decimal notation. So, just by looking at the address, you can know that if it is in this range, this will be a class A address. Okay. Now, let us look at class B. Class B is uniquely identified again by the first few bits, by the first two bits. Anything starts with 0 means class A, anything that starts with 1 0 means class B. Okay. Now, here we have 14 bits for your network, 2 bits are left aside and 16 bits for the host. So, you can have again similarly 2 to the power 14 minus 1 which is about 16000 networks and each network can have 2 to the power 16 minus 2 about 65000 computers. This is how class B networks are and if you again try to look at 1 0 starting with 1 0 and remaining all others can be all 0 to all 1s. So, the range will be 128 see 1 0 and all 0 the first byte will be 128 all are 0 0 0 up to 191. 1 0 followed by 6 this is 191, 191 255, 255, 255. This is the range of class B addresses. Similarly, let us look at class C. Well, for class C again uh, anything starting with 0 is class A, starting with 1 0 is class B starting with 110 is class C. So, you see there is some kind of uniqueness just by looking at the first few bits you will be able to identify which address class it is. Okay. Now, in class C you see there are 21 bits you are using for networks and only 8 bits for the host that means, networks where relatively fewer number of computers are there for such things for such cases class C is most suitable. With 21 bits you can have about 2 million networks and with 8 bits in the host you can have 254 computers or hosts per network. And again if you just expand 110 followed by all 0 to all 1 you can find this is the range of the IP addresses. So, just if you are given an IP address just if you remember these numbers by looking at the IP address you will be able to know which address class this IP address belongs to. Now, class D address starts with similarly 1110 this is a multicast address as I said. So, so in a network if you are sending a packet using this multicast address starting with 1110 then the packet will be delivered to all the computers in that network the idea is something like that. I am not going into detail the address range similarly is like this. Now, address distribution is like this you see class A networks are few in number, but in each network the number of computers can be huge. So, in terms of the total number of address this class A occupies the maximum. followed by class B and finally, followed by class C. Okay. This is the address distribution if you are interested to know this is how it works. Now, I mentioned that there are some special purpose IP addresses also which are used which are reserved for some special purposes. First, there are something called private IP addresses. Suppose, I have an organization I want to use some computers inside my organization to communicate among themselves. I did not want or I did not uh, need to have unique IP addresses which are not used anywhere in the world because I am using only within my organization and boundary inside. So, I can use something called private IP addresses which can be used by others also that is not supposed to be used for 
used publicly with other networks only inside your network you can use this private addresses. Like for class A this is identified as a private address any address that starts with 10 dot 10 dot something that is a private class A IP address. Class B there are actually 16 172.16 to 172.31 there are 16 such private class B networks which are identified as private. Similarly, for class C this 192.168 this is a private class C network. So, there are many cases where you use private addresses inside your organization, but when you are going out of the organization you use some kind of a network address translator or some kind of an address translation mechanism to get a unique address or a proxy server you can access the outside world this is how you work ok alright. Now, there is something called loopback or local address any address that starts with 127 that is assumed to be a local address local address means it never goes out of the network it will remain inside that is referred to as a local address ok. Suppose, even from your computer if you try to send a packet to 127 dot something it will come back to your own computer it will not go to anywhere else that is referred to as a loop back or a local address. Default network any network address you give 0000, 0, 0, 0 that is your default network the current network is usually the default network you can specify which is your default ok. And similarly, if we use an address all once all to 55 it means limited broadcast means broadcast within your present network. So, if you want to send a packet to all computers within your network you can use this limited broadcast address ok. This is how the IP routers handle the packets by looking at the address where to forward it will take a decision like that. Now, some convention now I told you that for the host part there are two addresses which are special purpose the all 0 and all 1 the convention that is followed is as follows for all of class A B or C networks the first and last addresses first means as I said the all 0 address all 0 and the last address means all 1 they serve special purpose the all 0 address specifies the network number like 118 is the address of the network if you write 000 in the host part this will identify the network 118000 that is identified this identifies the network and if you write all one like this this refers to the broadcast address of the network. So, if you write an address as 118 to 55 to 55 to 55 the packet will be sent to the 118 network and it will be broadcast to all the computers inside that network. So, these two all 0 and all 1 are used for special purposes all 0 indicates the network which is particularly used inside the routers to maintain the routing tables that we shall see later and all 1 is used for broadcast ok. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture now here we have seen some issues regarding IP addressing in particular we looked at the IP address classes and so on. Now, in the next lectures we shall be looking into some more detail on the TCP and UDP protocols because these are the two very important protocols in the TCP IP protocol suite that runs on top of the IP layer. They have different uh, you can say functionalities features and we shall be looking into some more details on that in our next lectures. Thank you.